Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The blocked out and relieved master cast was submitted to the dental laboratory along with a design or diagnostic cast in the dental laboratory work order. The responsibility of the dental laboratory is to fabricate a metal framework that fits the master cast perfectly. If they do, they have done their job. If, however, the metal framework that fits the master cast does not fit the patient, the fault can be traced back to an inaccurate impression for the master cast, an inaccurate master cast, or both. These are the responsibilities of the dentist. The dental laboratory will duplicate the master cast in an agar-based hydrocolloid and pour up an investment cast. The investment cast is therefore an exact duplicate of the blocked out and relieved master cast. It is poured from a special casting investment which is mixed to exact proportions to offset expansions and contractions involved in the casting procedure. It will show any internal finish lines created by the 24 gauge wax relief and also any ledges in the wax up for cast circumferential class. The dental laboratory is instructed to wax up the partial denture framework from the design drawn on the master cast or the design or duplicate cast and the instructions written on the dental laboratory work order. If the design is indistinct or if the Instructions unclear, the dental laboratory will have a difficult time in fabricating the framework in the wax. The dentist should check the wax up prior to having it cast by the dental laboratory technician. Particular reference in the wax up should be made to several points. First of all, the wrought component of the combination clasp as to it coming off below the height of contour and below the marginal ridge. Secondly, the position of the lingual bar, the inferior border of the lingual bar, lingual plate, in reference to the lingual frenum. Also, the thickness or bulk of the lingual bar, lingual plate, should be checked to make sure that's uniform and located the proper position. Also, the cast clasp as it fits on the ledge should be checked. Once the framework has been checked, the wax up of the framework, it is returned to the laboratory and the laboratory technician will cast the dental, dental appliance. The casting is polished and finished by the laboratory technicians. They are instructed not to place this back on the master cast. However, before the dentist places this back on the master cast, Additional finishing and polishing steps should be accomplished. To make this job easier, the touch-up kit should be in your possession. It consists of points, rubber wheels, and polishing materials that can be used to make the job easier and quicker for you. First of all, using the number five handpiece white mounted gemstone or the number 203 W white tapered point from the Tyconium touch-up kit, the excess metal in the free gingival margin areas on the casting should be relieved. Secondly, the embrasure areas of the lingual plate coming between the mandibular anterior teeth should also be relieved to pre prevent interference or movement of the anterior teeth. Finally, the area where the rot component of the combination clasp comes off the minor connector, any excess or fins of metal should be removed. Now using the 203 white mounted gemstone, I will start to relieve these areas. You should keep in mind that it's just a matter of rounding off, or removing a little bit of the excess. We can go on and relieve the excess areas the lingual plate,
Okay, in looking at the excess metal coming off the rock component of the combination clasp, the metal in this area is sufficient, it is not excess, and it will not have to be relieved. Next, using the number 11 handpiece mounted white gemstone or the 204W inverted cone mounted point from the taconium touch-up kit, the excess metal on the oral surface of the occlusal rest should be ground. These areas will be cupped out to eliminate interference from the opposing dentition. However, in cupping them out, please be very careful not to remove too much metal near the marginal ridge areas. Finally, when all the rest have been ground, one can see that the occlusal rest by the combination clasp has been cupped out and particular attention has been made to stay away from the marginal ridge. Now finally, the final area to be finished will be taken care of with the 73A7 straight finishing burr or the number 205W barrel shaped point from the Tyconium touch-up kit. Those areas to be relieved are the sharp edges that are usually left by the dental laboratory technician on the inferior border, the superior border, the edges of any minor connectors, and also any possible roughness on the tissue surface of the lingual bar or lingual plate. Now using the 205W, lightly take off the sharp border on the inferior the lingual bar lingual plate the superior border these areas are relieved to prevent any possible impingement or irritation to the mucosa of the patient also any possible irritation to the, the tongue. And finally, lightly go over the tissue surface of the lingual bar and onto the lingual plate. Now that all the grinding on the framework has taken place, those areas that were ground need to be smoothed prior to polishing. From the Tyconium touch-up kit, the number 223 or 222 rubber wheel can be used, or the number 240 mandrel with the 255 rubber point mounted on it can be used to smooth those areas. In mounting the 255 rubber point on the 240 mandrel, the mandrel should be firmly gripped with the side cutting pliers and the 255 point with the other hand screwed on as far as possible. This is usually up to the little locking screw. So it's a very snug fit. Once we have this mounted, we can mount 
put the mandrel in the handpiece, and then start to relieve all those areas that have been previously ground on. We'll start with the inferior border, the lingual bar, lingual plate. This is just a matter of lightly smoothing those areas that have been ground on. Using the same point, we can get the gingival areas, the embrasure areas of the lingual plate, edge of the minor connectors, going from that we can probably get the superior edge, the lingual bar, and also do some finishing on the tissue surface of the lingual bar, lingual plate, wherever those areas have been ground. Then in switching to the 222 or 223 rubber point wheel, excuse me. Also, we can go back over and where the oral side of the occlusal rest were cupped out, these areas can be smooth. If all the rough areas from the grinding are not smoothed out, when it comes to the polishing sequence, the original high luster that was on the framework cannot be achieved again. Now that the ground areas have been smoothed with the rubber points and rubber wheels, those areas must be polished using the number 260 felt wheel or the 265 felt point mounted on the 240 mandle in a similar manner as the 255 rubber point was mounted on it. You can put some of the polish. The little cube is found in the Tyconium touch-up kit. This is called Tycon polish. Getting some on the felt point. Those areas that have been previously ground and smooth can be gone back over to polish them. This procedure has been completed correctly. The high luster, without any evidence of scratches or roughness, should be evident. Okay, the felt wheel now be used to getting some polish on it to polish the cupped out occlusal rest areas. It shouldn't take too much polishing and so all we're doing is adding a luster to those areas previously ground. Now that all the areas have been relieved, smoothed, and grind on the framework, it is ready to be tried on the master cast. In trying it on the master cast, lightly place it over the occlusal rest seats, then firmly seat it to place. Once it has gone down all the way, one can see that the occlusal rest seats, the superior border, the lingual plate, the other rest seats, 
and the director chain of rest seat here are completely seated in the clusal rest seat areas and against the mandibular anterior teeth. If the framework had not gone completely down on the cast, it could be removed. A water-soluble dye called Liquimark could be painted on the tissue surface of the framework, allowed to dry, the framework replaced back on the casting, pushed down until it stopped, removed. The area of interference or areas would show by removing the dye, these areas could be relieved, smoothed and polished, and retried back on. This is a trial and error process and may take several times. Once the framework has completely seated, as ours has, it should be removed, gently removed, and the casting inspected to see if there are any score marks or scrapes on the cast that would be potential interferences to the insertion of the pliance in the patient. Inspecting casting, it can be seen that a score mark is developed in the distal lingual corner of the molar retainer. This area on the framework will then be relieved, smoothed, and polished. Once that has taken place, it can be reseated back on the master cast so that it's completely seated. Now that the finished framework is on the master cast, one can see that all the sharp edges have been reduced and removed. The occlusal rest areas have been reduced to allow for posing dentition. The, all the interferences, as in this area, have been removed so that it will go on the casting without scraping. And finally, that the casting does fit the master cast perfectly. When this has occurred, the dental laboratory has done their job. If, when taking the framework to the patient, it does not fit the patient, the fault must lie with the dentist in his initial impression for the master cast or in the master cast itself. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.